Good afternoon, guys, and uh, welcome to this FX and Commodity Rundown for the 28th of August. Okay, where I'm going to start today, I'm going to move away from the objectives, and I'm just going to start with something a little bit that, that a senior trader actually said to me yesterday. It was all about how traders are overcomplicating things. Okay, now, you see this very, very much in particularly the FX and commodity space. Traders want to do too many things. They see and create too many things in their minds as opposed to just doing the simple things. Right, so that's going to be the highlight of today's FX and commodity stream. It's just do the simple things. And I'm going to show you the simple things. Okay, more importantly, as your job as a trader is to take away what I say to you today and go and have a look at it. If it makes sense, if, it, if, if, it, if the understanding of what I show you makes sense to you, then implement it into your trading. More importantly, can you make profit with it down the line? That's the ultimate, that's what we're trying to achieve here, is can I teach you something that you can take into your trading and ultimately make money with? Okay, so what's our rundown? Our objectives, we're going to start off as usual with the dollar. All right, we're going to have a look at the index, turn our attention to the oil, move across to the pound, the gold, the oil and finish with the emerging market. So, first up, let's talk a little bit of fundamentals on the dollar. Okay, very important. Last week we spoke about this headline, which is that several members of the, the, the Federal Reserve have expressed concern on China and some saw downside risk to inflation from dollar and commodity prices. Okay, so we put ourselves back one week and we remember oil was slumping. We closed below 40 bucks a barrel. We bottomed out at 37 and a half bucks a barrel this week in the WTI. All right. More importantly, at the beginning of the week, we had the China scare, the Shanghai index, bottomed out at a 46% retracement from all-time highs. All right. And the world was coming to an end on Black Monday. That's where we were on Monday. Okay. Now, a couple of days forward, we fast forward. We're now trading 43 bucks a barrel in the oil, so $6 higher. All right. China has bounced somewhat as the central bank has intervened with interest rate cuts as well as verbally intervening and physically buying up the market. Right? And in general, the equity indices globally, the, the major equity indices, have all bounced back not just to flat on the week but actually positive on the week. Okay, so it's so important, guys. If there's one thing you can take away from today's briefing, it's not necessarily what I show you on the charts. More important, it's how to understand the markets. The markets don't move second for second. Fund managers don't make decisions every split second. They make decisions over time, over a period of time. And what you're going to see over the course of this little 15 minute presentation is how I show you how these flows look and how they're actually represented. Okay, we're going to move away from short term time frames and have a look at longer term time frames, weekly, daily type charts. Okay. So that's the first thing to know. Then, Dudley's remarks on Fed rate rise debate. Okay, so Fed's Dudley, deputy, very important member. He tends to vote in line with Fed's Yellen as tradition. The, the governor of the New York Reserve votes with the, the, the Fed head. Okay, he came out and effectively, in summary, September is less likely for him. Okay, he is a dove, but it's still data dependent. In other words, the data could still sway his decision from now until the September meeting in three weeks. Right. The data we have got coming, which he's referring to, is the core PC, which we have got in an hour and a half's time, and then obviously the non-farm payrolls at the beginning of September. Those are the two key pieces of data he and other Fed members are referring to. Right. If those come in in line and better, or they show signs that actually inflation is, is not really going low, it has stabilized, and if anything is ticking up, right, September is very much back on the table. What I would point out, and I've spoken to you about this guys all week, is that right now the market's pricing a very small chance of a rate, like 20 to 25% chance is actually priced in. So what that means is if we get a good data piece this afternoon, or if we get a good non-farm perils, the market needs to very aggressively reprice itself. Okay? Bear in mind, the market is unlikely to fully price out a rate hike chance in September unless there's some verbal uh, intervention from either Yellen or maybe a Fed's Fisher at the Jackson Hole this weekend. Okay, so there will always be some probability of a rate hike priced in. Okay, so bear that in mind. Good data will make the market go a lot further than bad data at the moment. Okay, so that's the fundamental perspective of the dollar. Let's have a quick look at what the dollar looks like. Let's see how we performed over the course of the week. So again, I show you this chart every week. A very important chart. Pavel, you can grab a light set, please. And all I want to point out with this chart, okay, is again, the major trend, guys. 
What is the major trend? That's the major trend. That's all you need to look at. Get away from the short-term flows. The major trend is that we are in a cyclical bull market. As simple as that. Okay, we have been since July last year. We've now done what is very typical when a market moves 17, 18, whatever, 27% in a straight line. It pulls back. We see profit take. All right, we see a little bit of two-way trade. And that's all we've seen here is two-way trade. Okay? The market pulled back this week to a very key pivot point. What point was that? Well, very simply, it was the very same point that we were at earlier on in the year, in, at the beginning of April. Remember what I said. Just do the simple things. Now, what happened to get us there is very simple. The euro rallied from 114 to 117 in a straight line. The yen rallied 240 ticks in two minutes. Everything rallied against the dollar at the same time on Monday. There was panic everywhere. But cool, calm heads said to themselves, well, hang on a sec. I still want to be a buyer of dollars. The trend is still very firmly up. As a result, what are those, you know, what are those gutsy long-term players being rewarded with? Well, a very aggressive bounce in the dollar. You all see that, guys. Do the simple things. That's all it is. You don't have to do the smart things. You don't have to overanalyze. Just do the simple things. Okay. So, in terms of where to from here, well, it's simple, guys. We've got a key pivot point there. Very important little area there now. A very strong support. In terms of the uptrend, it's not quite at the 38.2, but it is a good reference. It's a good pullback. In terms of path of least resistance, well, you can probably expect for the dollar to sit in the sideways type trend for now, until we give in further information. Okay? The thing that is likely to take us back to the top end and extend is further information about how and when we're going to hike rates in the US. So if you're a dollar bull, like the market is right now, that's what they're waiting for. They're waiting for that lift off. Okay, lift off will effectively reward the dollar bulls with what they started doing already last year, which was buying the market in advance of the rate hike. Okay, that's the dollar. Let's then move our attention and talk about the oil market. So fundamentally this week, oil has been a very interesting. Okay. First things first is yesterday, oil price in the biggest rise. So oil rallied the biggest or the most it has done in since 2008. It was something like a 9.7% rally yesterday. Now, again, remember what I taught you about newspapers. They're misleading. Okay, because what does 9.7% mean? It means very different things in very different situations. 10% okay? of 40 and 10% of 400 are two very different things, aren't they? Okay, so yes, there's a base number, 9.7%. Everyone goes, wow, oil just rallied 10%. That's incredible. Okay? But don't forget, oil has slumped all the way from 58 bucks a barrel, as we're going to see on the chart now, all the way down to 38.50, or 37.50, not too long ago. Okay, so it's merely just bouncing off a very low base. But nonetheless, we will talk about that bounce in a minute. Let's have a look at the oil inventories. As we can see, this week we were expecting a build, a very small build, and we got a very, very large drawdown. Okay, that was the first drawdown, or the first major drawdown, in almost three months. Okay, so whether that was a one-off, or whether that's now maybe actually quite a lot more demand coming through the market, only time will tell. The important thing is, how did the market respond? So let's have a look at the oil, and see what the market's response was. Very briefly. Okay. Again, note what we've got here. We've got a weekly oil chart. And we've been talking now the last couple of weeks. And we've been saying how the market has been one time framing. We'll remember what that is. Okay. It's where a market effectively, every week, makes a lower low and fails to take out the previous week's high. Okay. So as you can see, the market one time framed for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Effectively, nine weeks in a row. Nine weeks, guys. That's two and a half months of one time framing. All of a sudden this week, the market has now broken that one time framing. But more importantly, we could engulf this week. All right. Now, what I want to talk about in terms of the oil is not so much about you know, where to from here and fundamentals and Venezuela calling for an emergency meeting. What I want to talk about oil is purely from a technical perspective. Okay, so purely from a technical perspective, number one, if we close above that 42.30 this week, 
That is a ve that's what we call a head fake in essence. Market takes out key support, okay, but fails to sustain a break below key support. Okay, now, don't forget, a lot of people refer to a head fake as when a market breaks it on the same time frame, comes back and closes. I could create that for you if I made this a monthly chart. I could show you the head fake on a monthly chart if you wanted. Okay? But in, in essence, what we've got here is a very big head fake. More importantly, guys, we've got a response from the buyers. And we can see that response in the engulfing candle, which was caused mostly by yesterday's 9.5-10% rally. Okay. The third thing I want to point your attention to, and this is one of the most crucial things, and a lot of retail traders, a lot of you know, younger traders that don't use profiles won't necessarily see this. Okay. But us as professional traders, we look at these things all the time, and these are effectively profiles. It's a representation of the auction process that's going on in oil. And as we can see, where's the fair value of oil this year? Okay, we've got two fair values. We've got one somewhere around uh, 58 to 62, and the other one is somewhere around sort of 48 up to sort of 55. Okay, those are our two accepted values of oil this year. It's the two points where marketer says, actually, we accept oil at this price. This is fair price. Now, what did we see this week? Okay, we saw the market break out of that value. So it's broken down. It went lower, but what has it done since it's gone lower? Okay, remember what I taught you guys from day one. If I sold my Ferrari for a hundred pounds right now, every single one of you would want that Ferrari. Every one of you would want it. In fact, if I made it a thousand, you'd all want it. If I made it ten thousand, you'd all want it. If I made it a hundred thousand, suddenly things will start to slow down. Okay, guys, that's all that's happening in oil. It's being auctioned at 37.50. Okay. Now, had you been trading this on a minute to minute, an hourly, a daily, you'll be telling me, no, but it's not right, and it was hard, and it was difficult, and it, it was, no, it's not the low. But hang on a sec. Remember, fund managers, institutions, they don't look at the minute for minute. Right. What do they look at? They look at the weekly, the monthly, the longer term time frame. And the longer term time frame in this market is telling us that the market is actually rejecting this area. It's finding this price too much of a discount based on profile theory. So where to from here? Well, it's simple. We should keep auctioning higher until we find acceptable value. Now, one thing I will say to all of you and pay attention, okay? And this is not just for oil. When a market does a straight line down move like this, where is the resistance in this market? And if you've been following me for a long enough time, you will know what I'm going to say. There is no resistance in this market. Why? Because no sellers have been tested. It's gone straight down. Okay? So resistance, there is no... What the mistake retail traders make is they go now and they'll get a Fibonacci and they'll go, there's resistance there, 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 and they'll create points of resistance that don't exist. Resistance is created by sellers, not by a line that you create based on a percentage. Don't forget that. Okay? One of the most biggest mistakes I ever see is when we get these straight line moves, people are constantly looking to try and sell it on the way back. And whilst that's not intuitively wrong, it is wrong when a market's done a straight line and you're looking to try and create resistance from nothing. Okay, you all got that. Don't be going and making the mistake and finding these points where the market stopped. Yes, it could stop there. But more important is pay attention to which way price is flowing. And right now, price is flowing to the upside. You understand that? Okay, so that's the oil, guys. And that's, you know, basically what I'm leaning on is I wouldn't be surprised to see that low hold out for maybe the rest of this year. Maybe we've seen a low in oil for now. Okay. Important points of reference, okay, obviously is, you know, <laughs> we don't want to be getting below 40 bucks a barrel. If you're following the oil, that's the key, guys. We shouldn't get below 40 again, all right? 40 should sustain uh, support now. We should see, if anyone wants to be long, they should be standing in the way of any kind of sell side action now going forward. Okay, that's the oil market. Let's move on and let's talk about a few other markets. Let's get to the cable quickly. I've noticed we're already pushing on for time. So let's move to the cable and uh, let's talk about the cable from the week. 
So first things first, uh, Reg said on Wednesday, or he came out and he had this market absolutely spot on. He, he's, he's nailed it this week. Okay, what we've got here in that little area, we've had five weeks of inside range. So on a distribution, it's just that, 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 and that. And all that's effectively happened is the market's accepted one big value. And what Reg said was that we broke out to the upside and we should have seen continuation in the market, but we didn't. And Reg was 100% spot on. He said, if we come back inside here, yeah, we should very quickly not only navigate to the other side, but extend. And he nailed it, guys. He absolutely nailed it. He was talking about it at 156. It's, a, it's 153 and a half now. 250 pips in two days. Okay? So these guys know what they're talking about. They don't just make these things up. Right? This was the kind of uh, technical play that we used to see a lot in the German Bunds back in the day. So remember this, whenever you get tight consolidation for a very, very long time, the break is important. It should continue when it breaks. But if it re-enters value, it should very quickly navigate to the other side of value and then extend the other way. Almost like a, a, a fake break or a fake move, a fake extension. You all got that. Okay. So where to for cable? It's simple, guys. <laughs> We've got one week engulfing the last six weeks. More importantly, I'm going to show you a chart that I don't think most people look at. Okay? But it's effectively the cable index. Now, the reason I'm showing this is because a lot of people are looking at cable just from you know, the perspective of cable versus the dollar. But cable versus its major trading partners is very aggressively selling off. You go look at cable against yen, Swissy, Euro, uh, US dollar and quite a few others. The cable is down. It's selling off. We're seeing a little bit of profit take out of cable. Not necessarily against the dollar, but against the other major trading pairs, uh, partners of the UK. Okay, so very important. If you're wanting to buy cable, well, this is the year. As you can see, we had a 9.2% rally on the year. And right now, all we're seeing, guys, is just a little bit of profit take in the pound space. So if you want to buy the cable, if you want to be long, wait for this move to finish. Wait for it to complete. Okay, these moves, these little profit take moves can take a little bit of time. Right. However, from a dollar perspective, well, in terms of support, yes, okay, we have got this 153.29 and it's likely to cap this week. Thereafter, we've got 151.47 as support. But other than that, guys, there's nothing major until we get back towards the yearly lows. Okay, so right now, cable has broken this medium-term trend that we were in, which was a slow trending grind higher. We've broken that. We should look to find lower value over the next couple of days and weeks. Okay, that's the cable. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Let's quickly turn our attention to the gold market. And let's get the gold. In fact, we'll come back to the gold. Let's turn our attention to the euro. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the euro. Sorry guys, bear with me. Uh, there we go. Okay, what I want to say about the euro. Again, note what I'm doing. I'm not getting a daily time frame. Okay, I've got the weekly time frame. So we know we've sold off from 140. We know we've been in this sideways triangular pattern, flag pattern. We know this week that we effectively punched out of the top of that. But where are we going to close on the week? That's the question, guys. As simple as that. We close anywhere below 113.75. Okay, that's the key. We close below that. The next stop is back down towards 109. As simple as that, guys. It's that simple, this job. But we need to move away from the second to second time frame and pay attention to the bigger flows. The bigger flow this week was that someone sat there going, thank you very much for giving me 117.5 to the dollar. Legend. Okay, so what do we expect next week? 112.15, very important support. We take out that 112.15, it's acted as resistance once, twice, three times. It's also the low of this week. We take out 112.15, we should then extend back down towards this, or sorry, back down towards the lower end of this uh, flag pennant around 109.75. That's effectively all you need to understand in terms of the euro. More importantly, don't forget, the euro acted quite a lot this week as a risk off barometer. In other words, if the equities are selling off next week, you're going to struggle to see this euro selling off. If the equities rally next week, it's very likely that sell-off will occur a lot easier. Okay, that's the euro. And then let's turn our attention to the gold and emerging markets. Bear with me for another five minutes, guys. So first things first, the gold market. 
Okay, another very fascinating market. Technically, pretty straightforward, right? We've been in this long-term channel or medium term for quite some time now, almost a year and a half, slowly grinding out low prices. We bounced off the 50% of the long-term trend, in other words, dating back to 2001. We bounced off it not too long ago. The market has now had an inside week in gold. Right? Bear in mind, at the beginning of the week, when the world was ending, gold was only rallying $20. When the world was coming to an end, gold only rallied $20. Toward the back end of the week, the risk, you know, the risk off theme disappeared, and gold is now sort of at the lower end of last week's range. Right, so what that means for us is, well, we could potentially see a lot more of the sideways trade before gold makes up its mind. What I would say, however, is that gold has got potential to the upside and to the downside. In terms of technicals, this week's low, this week's high. As simple as that, guys. Okay? What I would say, remember, when you're analyzing the markets, you look at a market like this and you compare it to a market like the euro, you say to yourself, well, where can I best use my capital? For me right now, I wouldn't want to use my capital in gold. There's far easier, easier trades in the oil, in the euro, in the cable, in many other markets. So I allocate my capital where the trade makes sense. You got that, guys. Don't forget that. We don't have to trade a market. What we have to do is make money. Okay. Last things last, let's talk about the emerging markets. Okay. Uh, come on. Markets. Okay. So, all I want to talk about with the emerging markets, guys, we, I showed you the chart last week. Pay attention to the lower charts. Okay. At the bottom, you've got Turkish Lira, Indian Rupee, Brazilian Real, Mexican Peso, South Korean Won, and the South African Rand. What I do want to turn your attention to is what we've done this week. Inside week for the Lira. Okay. Outside week, that looks like it's going to close back in range for the Indian Rupee. Same thing for the Brazilian Real. Burst out at the beginning of the week, but it's going to close back inside range. Same thing for the Mexican Peso. Same thing for the South Korean one. And you can't see it there, but same thing for the South African Rand. So what we've seen, Monday, emerging markets collapsed in dramatic fashion. But by the end of the week, they've recovered not only the losses, but they're going to close up on the week, appreciate on the week. Now, what we call this in trading terms is a blowout top for emerging markets. Keep an eye on this, guys. These emerging markets could very likely be topping out. Now, don't forget, the newspapers are going to spin you the story that emerging markets are still collapsing, that the end of the world is still coming because the Fed's going to hike. But don't forget, fundamentals are one thing. Emerging markets have had two to three years to unwind their positions in preparation of the Fed hiking. Technicals, price action is showing us something completely different. As traders, what do we pay attention to? Price action. We watch price and we make our decisions based on where price is going. Not where price has come from and not where price effectively being dictated by the newspapers. What price is doing right here, right now. Okay, keep it simple guys. Find the easy trades. Maximize on those trades. Good luck for the rest of the week and we'll see you again next week.